Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today I'm excited to do another product review for you. And I actually, a company called 3D Rudder just reached out to me to go ahead and test out one of their products, do a review on it, and share it with you guys. And the reason they reached out to me is specifically in regards to the fact that this is a Star Citizen related product. Now, it's not a Star Citizen labeled product, um, but what it is, is it's actually a sort of rudder that you use with your feet to help you control things. And the obvious application there in a space game is going to be giving you an additional six degrees of uh, freedom type of controller, which is really exciting because I think right now a lot of us have the utilities or peripherals on our desk, like a HOTUS or two joysticks or, you know, HOSAS or um, some people are using uh, pedals. Um, there's a variety of different things that we have today, but what this is supposed to actually do is give you a platform that you can use on your feet to control your ship and in flight as well as in some other applications. Um, now, what this device is supposed to have is a set of sensors inside that are going to help you to kind of control, um, you know, whatever it is with your feet. And it's made of uh, plastic and metal. Um, and this was really designed to be used in more uh, VR applications. But it applies way past that because it really can either just act as a standalone peripheral or it can end up kind of becoming something else altogether. And how that actually works is you're supposed to have a dashboard that you end up using that can set this device in line with a, you know some sort of uh, other device that you would have. So this what you're using on your feet could become a, another joystick or it could become a keyboard or it could become a mouse. Those types of things. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and break into it. Big heavy guy, 3D rudder. Um, and the packaging here is pretty impressive. Um, it is big, it is heavy. Um, you can see it kind of slides in and out. And this thing was wrapped in a cellophane or a plastic type of uh, covering. I took it off because nobody wanted to watch me struggle with that in the video. So let's go ahead and slide this guy out. Um, and I guess before we do that, you can see the back. I'll let you guys just take a look at that for a second. Kind of gives you some information about the way the actual device moves, you know, 360 degrees of up, down, left, right, whatever. Um, and some compatibility things here, being Windows PC related, connecting via USB, etc., etc. So, let's go ahead and get into this. Oh, let me go and put the handle down. And once we get in, again, we're presented with a nice foam layer that's actually protecting the device. Uh, as well as a tag here saying... You know, welcome to get started. Use this link. Follow the instructions on screen. And we'll go ahead and remove the foam piece. And then we're presented with the device itself, which is large. It is red. It's got kind of a nice textured feel to it. So let's go ahead and yank this out of here and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Nothing really on the inside of the box elsewhere. Just more foam packaging. This thing is very, very, very protected. Everything about this is heavy duty. Um, and okay, so here we are looking at the device. So again, it almost looks like a like a manhole cover, almost like one of those balance discs that you might stand on on the gym or use in like a yoga type of situation. Um, it does have like a faux leather feel to it here. Um, it says, use 3D ruddered while seated only, do not stand. It's listed right there, as well as the nice sticker at the bottom, making sure you don't bite it, <laughs> um, you know, by uh, standing on it and falling and twisting. Um, from the sides, you can see there is a thin layer between there. So I think some of that, what that's going to do is, yep, it's got a little give to it. So I think some of that's going to be sensors. On the bottom, it is a little bit rubberized, actually really rubberized. It sticks quite well. Um, so I think what this purpose is, is probably so you can use it on hardwood floors or um, carpet or really any type of surface. Um, carpet, it's obviously going to stick really well. If you were to use this on hardwood, it would probably slip if it didn't have this. So I think that's the obvious intention there. And then we've got a USB cable prepared. Now, with this, what you're supposed to be able to do is you're supposed to have a bunch of different uh, accesses or different ways that you can use this. And the obvious ones are going to be push and pull for going forward and backwards. Um, you're going to have tilting to the left and right to give you sideways movement like strafing. Um, you're supposed to be able to rotate um, for twisting or turning. Uh, and then there's also supposed to be one other one that you actually control via pressure on your toes and on your heels. Um, so, you know, I think what that's probably going to end up being, and I'll have to test this out, is I think if you do pressure like this, you probably go up. And if you do pressure like this, you probably go down. But again, we'll get into the game and actually test that out. Um, now, one thing that's pretty cool about this is the device has actually been tested in Star Citizen. Um, and there's actually a whole page dedicated to it on their site. Um, and what that's supposed to do is give you ideas on how you can use this utility um, within the game and give you some different ideas so you're not going in blind and trying to have to figure that out on your own. And one final note before we actually get in and test it, 
um, is that the obvious application here is for flying, but it goes on a little bit past that. You're supposed to be able to just really replace any device you want with this. So theoretically, you could use this in FPS, so like in Star Marine, for example, or just on the first person side of the universe, um, and use it to actually walk around and move. And I think that's one of the things that we had that's different from, you know, like a console player on PC, um, is that you're, re you're really restricted to ASWD, and this, it's all more fluid. It's analog. You know, you're going to be able to kind of do slight motions and move. So, you know, if you want to run forward and strafe, you're doing one of these guys. So you kind of, I think, are going to be able to use this effectively in Star Marine as well. So we're going to test that out. I'm really excited to get in and test this device. So again, I'm going to test this. I'm going to use it. I'm going to get it set up. I'll kind of record some of that and show it to you. Um, but that's it for now. Um, st stick around. We're going to be doing the uh, follow up on this soon. And I'll have some findings for you in just a moment. So if we start off with the configuration and setup of this device, it was actually a pretty much a breeze. Uh, it was actually a lot simpler than I expected it to be. It basically consisted of downloading the software that's known as the dashboard and making sure that that version is up to date, then plugging in the rudder and making sure that the firmware was up to date as well. That update took all of about 10 seconds. Uh, in addition, there are tutorials in the dashboard to help you get set up and be a little bit more familiar with how to use the device and how to configure settings and keybinds. The key binding function is beyond easy when using the keyboard section because basically you just click the corresponding icon on the screen and then you press a button on your keyboard to assign what action it will then take. Uh, the joystick part I had a little bit of trouble with getting assigned right away, um, but the second I swapped that over to the HOTUS mode, uh, Star Citizen was able to detect this device as a new input, so I selected in-game what I wanted to bind, then pressed the appropriate axis on the 3D rudder, and Star Citizen bound the key. Uh, you basically get a little feedback from the device in the form of a beep when you've made some changes, and if you don't care for that beep, which is fairly loud, you can disable it in the settings. Uh, it is worth noting that you have to keep your feet on the device, because if you remove them, it will go inactive, which takes about a second or so of having your feet back on the device in order to recalibrate. That's not normally a big issue, but it is worth keeping in mind when you're playing so you don't get stuck in place being left vulnerable. Um, the rubber base did a nice job of keeping it in place. Uh, however, I, I'm a bit of a kicky spaz when it comes to gaming, so I did have a few times where my foot would kind of jerk and I would have to recenter it on my own. Um, now, it didn't move much unless it was my own fault, basically. Now, I'm going to be talking about this in both flight and on foot, but starting with flight, it's an interesting experience to learn, and while it's fairly intuitive, i.e., you know what you're supposed to do, actually doing it with your feet with a lot of control takes some time to learn. Uh, it can be challenging to move just along one axis, uh, which gets better the more you play with it, but is also probably at least partially tied to the fact that you have less control in your feet and ankles than you do in your hands. I mean, your hands are meant for fine-tuned manipulation. Your feet are a little bit more utilitarian by design. Um, it is something that you can mostly learn to control, but the up-down strafe that's being used uh, by counter-pressing your toe and your heel was the one that I was most prone to accidentally hitting. Um, there are a few things to consider with this device, um, and that's what your current control scheme is and what types of ships you're looking to use. For example, if you prefer to use a ship like a Sabre or a Hornet, something that you plan to do some aggressive dogfighting with, um, you're, gonna, you're not going to get that same level of control as some of the other options that are out there. Uh, movements aren't as crisp, um, and you're just not as accurate, so you're a little more prone to overshooting your target. Um, the fact that you are a little bit more drifty with this also means that collisions with objects were more common for me. So based on my experience, I would say those of you who are really into dogfighting, there's probably better uh, options out there to control your ship. Now on the flip side of those, that coin, for those of you that are interested in ships like the Starfarer or maybe the Orion, or really anything big and slow anyways, um, control with the 3D rudder is a lot of fun and it's relatively easy. There isn't such a thing as twitchy movements in ships like that anyway, so you don't require a lot of movements like that with your feet. Um, that also means that by moving this control to your feet, um, you do get to free up usage of your hands for something else. And that's another area where I see this device actually shining. If you're controlling your ship with your feet, you can more easily utilize power management on your ship, organize a fleet, chat with those around you, you know, talk, work your fueling options in your star fare. Maybe you're just going to take a sip of your beer or your coffee. There's a lot you can do when you essentially gain a free hand, and that's basically what you get with this device. Now, we know there's going to be extended periods of flight time as well, and not having to keep your hand on the throttle or a joystick is a perk as well, though you can obviously assign just permanent throttle movements. Um, that really highlights what I think about this device for flight. It's an outstanding supplemental device, but not an ideal replacement device. 
Um, some of this is also going to depend on your current control setup. For example, with dual joysticks, I find a lessening of control by replacing the functions from one stick to the rudder. However, it adds quite a bit more value to those of you that are playing with traditional HOTUS. For example, on my X52 Pro, I have strafe up, down, left, and right, all assigned to the index finger on my throttle D-pad, um, with strafe back being assigned to a thumb button. Now, in general, the finger gives decent control, but the switch itself is limited to what motions you can use. So using this device when paired with a standard HOTUS setup uh, provides some maneuvers you may not necessarily be able to use in the configuration that I had it in. At the end of the day, you can really assign these axes to whatever you want them to be. So you get flexibility in how you use the device. Um, just know it is a little bit more about utility than precision. Now, in regards to FPS gaming, using the 3D rudder to control your forward, backward, and strafe movements... That was a lot of fun, and it actually was probably my favorite usage for this device. Um, it can be a little mentally challenging not to use your fingers, since W, A, S, and D is so ingrained into our brains, um, essentially considering that you still have your hand on the keyboard for other functions that you're going to need to hit. Um, but you can get the hang of that pretty quick. The other perk there is that if you're, is basically that you can get to hit other buttons quicker and assign other keys, and you basically don't have to take your hands off of the W, A, S, and D, um, you know, your character movement keys, in order to end up using those. Basically giving you an option to be slightly more effective as far as, you know, utilizing, um, you know, like items or grenades and reload and those sorts of things. Um, movements do start to become pretty natural pretty quick, and it's kind of a fun and new and different way to experience an FPS game. It almost combines some of the benefits of using a mouse from an accuracy shooting perspective with the fine-tuned control of a gamepad stick for your character's movement. So from a Star Citizen view, I would put it like this. If you're looking for advanced dogfighting peripherals, this probably isn't the device for you, unless you solely plan on supplementing other controls, but even then, the return is pretty minimal, and like I said before, it's really more about gaining some utility as opposed to gaining precision. However, if you do want to use this for some multitasking, or you use it for big and lumbering ships anyways, then it's a pretty cool device. And if you want a new way to experience FPS on the PC, then it's a really cool option, and that's what I really enjoyed using it for. Um, everything with this device is going to be subject to the amount of time that you practice. Um, I put in a substantial amount of playtime with it, and I felt that I was getting better with the more that I used it. That being said, replacing something like a second joystick, I felt that I hit a ceiling, or at least a plateau, of how much control I was going to get, and it's not ever going to replace that ability. So your mileage may vary some based on your kind of usage in-game and what your current peripheral setup is on your desk. Either way, it's a cool new utility that may or may not be right for you, but it was fun to use and something new to try. So if you guys have questions on this device, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer those for you. Otherwise, stay tuned for a lot more content coming your way soon. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.